I go. No, don't. <laughs> Did you feel the moment a while ago, guys? And he just had to spot. You never. Everybody was just like, ooh. And then you're just. I go. Jeez, Louise. Powerful lyrics. Powerful <laughs> lyrics. Cynthia, she's also the lead actress in the movie Harriet. So. And we're still in Black History Month, so we're still gonna keep talking about what history means to us and we are responsible for our history, what who's responsible, and where the present generation sees our history. So with us, a few millennials who <laughs> we'll talk about the topic. Do we even care? Um, like they say, you know, I'm a millennial, so do I care about black history? Why should I care about black history? So what are you trying to say? I mean I'm the only millennial person, but it's not a millennial, what's it down here? We're joined <laughs> by Shanoi, Savannah, and Daniel to talk about this. I did not say that. And if you want to take that from what I said, then we'll go right ahead. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. All right, so here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to give you a situation. The other day I was talking to a friend of mine, and with everything that's happening in the US right now, he lives overseas. And we were watching a program, and he said he don't want to watch that show because I'm really honestly tired for hear about this. Every minute is like, it's always about a black thing, it's always about a black thing, why it's about, about a black thing. And that is an example of an opinion of a millennial. Us being black, living in Jamaica, do you think a lot of us have the, main, the same mindset that we're tired for hear about the black thing or is it still relevant for us? Let's start with the ladies around now. Well, I think it's really quite relevant still. Um, I mean, I can only speak from my, my experience as a dark-skinned black woman growing up in Jamaica and just we have a... We, we still have those problematic mindsets. And even speaking to your friend's perspective of, oh, too many black things, I feel like that's fair to say because I, I do think that black trauma has now become its own genre and then people are kind of just using that over and over and over and, and it's triggering for a lot of us. Mm. Um, but as far as it being relevant, black history is the foundation that you stand on to really know where you're coming from, to know what your space is in this earth, to understand how other people would perceive you as well. So um, absolutely still relevant, still necessary, the education around it for sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shanoi, how important is it, you know, as a member of humanities and education, for us to remember our history? Mm -hmm. How important is it for us to preserve our history and to pass on the what we've learned to the next generation. Hmm. So essentially, what we've been learning and what we're learning is a foundation in which you can build on. Um, in my area of study, really and truly, it has been really good to see that there's some form of relevance being taken and a, and a, and a set form of importance placed on our history. Um, it has really helped us to build the foundation and then we can move along the path you know, to ensure that preservation happens and we can make it into what it is mainstream and that students can see, millennials can see the importance of it. And while we do so, um, it, it helps us to propel as a nation and as a, a generation of young people. Well, it's good that you talk about preservation. Yeah. It's yeah, wonderful. It but, but what are we preserving? Do you think, Daniel, that mm -hmm young people even know what we're preserving? That's you think them know Harriet Tubman? If the movie never come out, you think them would have know the story of Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, um, Mar Man, what, do you think MLK, anybody would know people. all of that those things? That is the question I was asking myself even before coming here. Was like, do young people already know the relevance or already yes. the significance of Black History and Black History Month in mm -hmm. general? Because yeah. it's so recent. I don't think people know that. Like, right. it just It's not even a century right. that Black History yeah. or this celebration has been around. So I think it's very relevant because we need to kind of extend that period. You know, we came so far in such a short period of time, and I feel like that should be celebrated regardless, you know? Regardless if it happened a century ago or not, it should be celebrated forever because, you know, we made that impact in such a short space of time. Yeah. And it's impressive, you know? Yeah. It's really impressive. I don't think we're as connected to our black history as we should be because mm -hmm. when you look at the Caribbean, we have so many freedom fighters. Fighters, yes. Absolutely. Hardly know anything about them. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I think because, do you think it's because the black history month is just concentrated on in February mm -hmm. and then the rest of the year, nothing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is why it's forgotten? You know what? I don't mm -hmm. know that it's forgotten. And I, speaking as well from my experience, which is all I have to mm -hmm. speak from. Um, <laughs> As far as what I'm seeing online, my experience online is that social consciousness, um, your historical background, uh, political, you know, point of views, mm -hmm. that is something that's trendy almost right now. Right. You cannot be in this world at the age that you are 
or just as a young person and not have an idea of where you stand on who should be voted in as prime minister. Mm. You know what I mean? Who should be voted in as president? We kind of have to know everything they about what's walk. going on. Yeah, yeah you have to be walk. walk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's its own trend. Yeah. So um, you have to be aware of what's happening in Jamaica, what's happening in America, what's happening around um, Asia and so on. So. Is that supposed to be something that we are supposed to educate ourselves on or is it something that should be done in schools? I remember when I was going to high school, prep school, um, I learned, Christopher Columbus, I learned a lot about the Civil War, I learned yeah. a lot about American mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jamaican history Caribbean was history. Caribbean history was minimal. Minuscule. Mm. Yeah. Overall, black black history is minuscule. It's yep. taught. And so what can we do to adjust that in schools at this point? Right. So when we look at that, it's really a detailed look into the framework that exists in mm -hmm. the institutions that are here. Mm -hmm. um, at UWE um, and other universities, um, there are courses that, that embed Caribbean history, right? Mm -hmm. We may not see it mainstream in the high schools, the primary schools, but once we're there, um, the, the courses are set in a way in which students are, have to learn it, mm. right? So outside of that though, um, but that's at university. university. And everybody university. doesn't We're really go to university when them would too. just come. Mm -hmm. If yeah. we can do something to adjust it so. from like, kid stage, our children, well, my children, yeah, yeah millennials, our <laughs> yeah, children. Yeah. That, that but, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's there. However, we have to look at the current framework that exists and see how we can embed it there. But I'm speaking on institutions. Institutions doesn't necessarily mean education. Mm. We can look at entertainment, we yeah. can look at the other so, avenues, yeah. um, yes. politics, yeah. mm -hmm. to see how we can get these messages Theater. into, right? Mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the students mm -hmm. and into the younger generation as they come up. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in School. a classroom setting. Mm. Yeah. And, and you speak about the current, <coughs> and I think about who now will we, 20 years from now, look back and say this person um, was a difference maker. They will be remembered in history because mm -hmm. from way back, you think about Martin Luther King, yeah. um, Malcolm X, you think about all those James guys Robin, and the women, Roger Harriet Rodney, Tubman. Mm -hmm. but now, Rodney. who are the present day leaders mm -hmm. that you can say are heroes or freedom fighters? I know Barack Obama will be one. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. But also just the unnamed people, just I can think of a few YouTube, YouTubers that come to mind. <laughs> um, Jules, just people in the space who are just they make their whole life around educating Keaton. people cool. around the world on black history mm -hmm. yeah. as far as like just caribbean black black history and american black history mm -hmm. so i think anybody who has a say me being on here proudly wearing my head wrap <laughs> and um my calabash bag big up tia clothes girl um <laughs> uh, yeah and speaking about being confident in my body as a dark-skinned black woman we, we you know we're constantly put down and sharing where those beliefs ideals come from um, I think yeah the, that's what it looks like now I think to be a an, uh, yeah, an, an activist, activist. Yeah. <laughs> Shanoi, Shanoi made a, a comment about it coming from so many different places yeah. um, in terms of education what do you as an entertainer and your peers do to preserve our history Wow, um, mm. I definitely use patwa in my music as much as I can. Um, and then also, I'm, I'm myself, you know, because blackness is represented in, in many different ways. Yeah. It doesn't, Jamaicanness doesn't need to be represented as just one version of a thing, of, mm -hmm. of an example. So I'm myself. I, I wear, I, I express myself as freely as possible. I try to be educated about what I say yeah, on social yeah. media, even though sometimes it's, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit heated, a little bit emotional, <laughs> but um, yeah, I myself and I, and I freely express it and I try to be as confident as I can be in this body, in yeah. this human, you know, experience. Okay. Daniel, we speak about the history of, the black history in America, the history in Jamaica, but you're from Trinidad. Barbados. Uh, Barbados. Barbados. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I figured as much where the accent was coming mm -hmm. from. You speak speak to me about Barbados. What is one part of your history that you think Jamaicans or people in general don't know about? Mm. Well, Barbados. I think that a lot of people sleep on Barbados and its contributions to the Caribbean region and just the upliftment of the people as a whole because a lot of our founding fathers would have been, you know, integral into integrations and you know, trying to make this whole, the Caribbean in general, a place for black people to live and thrive, you know, but to mention one person from Barbados that I think made a significant impact would be kind of, uh, would be Arrow Barrow. I think that he 
was a very iconic and legendary man for Barbados and the Caribbean at large because some of the things that he did for Barbados kind of spilled over into other Caribbean nations mm -hmm. and it was kind of like a blueprint, you know, for people to do great things. So yeah, um, in Black History Month, and so to go back to something that you were saying that, um, that you know, it's not always, Black History Month is February, but yeah. You know, we don't necessarily celebrate it with the rest of the year. I disagree because I feel like as a Caribbean people, we kind of all are black. So that kind of stays with us for the year, you know? But it's probably more relevant for people you know, outside where they're living in another person's world and they're mm -hmm. trying to get that representation. Mm -hmm. So it's quite relevant for them, but for us. Hmm? I disagree, I think it's just as relevant here in the Caribbean yeah. among us. Yeah, because I feel like um, there's still a bit of segregation as far as just skin color, who has the mm. mixed hair and so on. And and just that like hierarchy of what's beautiful and what's mm. smart. You know what mm. I mean? It's, it's super, I think it's super relevant. And until, until mm -hmm. we're past those hurdles, Thrills? I think, mm. yeah, it's just as relevant. But it could be a different experience also. too, because I find <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 But I think it's a different experience, for, I guess, for me being in Barbados because yeah. in Barbados we never really experienced that kind of in Jamaica. You know how wow. there's colorism? Yeah, we. That That's not, wild. Yeah, so to me it's a, like a normal. A first you know, you're black. The space, so, the man space. So, we can come. Yeah, so, so, so you see what's missing. So you yeah. see what's missing. Yeah. Caribbean islands. We don't. We don't, we don't know each other. We're not communicating. We don't know each other. There's, there's, there's Carrie car coming up. But um, this but is Carrie coming. Yeah. We don't know each other, and I think that is. Step one, I think, mm -hmm. as a whole, we have to be recognized recognized as one. one yes. I start with Twitter war, but who own war? Well, exactly. Uh -oh. And Jamaicans don't worry, yeah. Anna. Done it. Careful. Guys, thank you so much, and thank you thank for your you. input. We'd love to continue this conversation, and we hope you will continue it yes. for the rest oh, of mm -hmm. the month and onward on yes, your please. own pages and at school and all of that stuff. Sure. Yeah. Thank Sanoi, you so much for having Savannah, us. Savannah and Daniel. Yeah, Thanks niceness. Nice. Nice. The talk turns to understanding the dynamics of reggae music on the other side of the break. Oh, that's all. Food. The food not there. What's the problem? Mm -hmm.